Let's talk about mapping. Mapping is at the heart of what we do. We want to enable everyone to make amazing maps through dynamic and data-driven styling. We'll come, we'll see a lot of this this morning, but I'd like to call out the top right corner under exploratory mapping. I think that's an exciting area that I know you're gonna see as we go through these uh, demos this morning. The mapping is powered by the JavaScript API. It enables powerful and high-performance web applications to data-driven visualization, client-side mapping and analysis, 3D scenes with powerful widgets and workflows. It's a modern JavaScript API for your web GIS. It supports 2D and 3D visualizations. It's a mobile-first design, and it supports data-driven visualization. Turn that raw data into useful geographic information. It also has the tools to allow you to build applications where you can allow others to explore and make maps with smart mapping. So this morning, we're gonna go through a series of uh, demo demonstrations. We're gonna show you some of the apps that Esri makes and how it takes advantage of some of these capabilities. And then we're gonna show you a few applications uh, that, to give you an idea of what you could make. To start it off, I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer from the ArcGIS Online development team, and she's gonna talk about how the new map viewer has taken uh, these new capabilities into account. Jennifer? Thanks, Jeremy. Mapping in ArcGIS Online just got a lot better with the new map viewer. As the Census 2020 is just around the corner, let's narrow down some schools that volunteer groups can visit to encourage census participation in hard-to-reach communities. This map contains close to 100,000 schools across the United States. I'll add an expression on the enrollment field to show schools with at least a certain number of students. Notice the fast filtering and immediate feedback on the map. With filter and effect, the person exploring sees where the expression is true and where it's not true. I'll add a new filter expression on the state field. Again, you gotta love how fast this is. I'm interested in the state of California, and more specifically, Los Angeles, which has one of the hardest to count uh, locations in the, in the United States. Let's add a demographic layer to find more schools to visit. Living Atlas contains American community survey layers that are updated every year. I'll hide the schools and use smart mapping to explore this new demographic layer. Here we see the percent of population, age five and up, who speaks Spanish at home. There are hundreds of color ramps available, and we've made it easy for you to find the perfect ramp, whether it's colorblind friendly, purples, blues, greens, reds, or my personal favorite, best for dark backgrounds. I love this category because of the new bright color ramps that are only available in the map viewer. They're beautiful, modern, and they can make any of your data sets shine. But let's make this map a little more interesting. I'll change the theme to above and below so that the ramp is centered around a meaningful value, in this case, the average. Because we can make quick changes to explore and discover new patterns, the new map viewer gives you that freedom to try different things. So let's try something new. I'm interested in school age population, age five to 17, and I'll compare English with Spanish speaking communities. Okay, what I'm about to show you is my favorite new capability, dot density, and it's faster and better than ever. This mapping style really personalizes your data. In this case, one dot represents 15 people. Notice how fast and responsive this is. The purple areas in the map have similar levels of English and Spanish-speaking populations. This is all thanks to the new blend overlapping colors option. Blue and red combine to make purple. Similarly, blue and yellow make green, and red and yellow make orange. In this map, the red areas represent Spanish-speaking populations. Let's zoom in to Santa Ana, where over 80% of the population here speaks Spanish. 
I'll dock the pop-up so we can check out the new sleek Forex charts. So let's bring those schools back in and bring them to the top of the map. I'll change the color to better match the demographic layer below. Volunteer groups might not be able to visit all of these schools, so I'll edit the filter to only show schools with 1,500 students or more. I'll add some more context to the map by adding labels. Here we see the school name, and I'll add a new label class, the number of students that attend each school. I'll move the placement and change the color. All the fun vector tile-based map fonts are available in the new map viewer. So I'll choose this handwriting style font and use arcade expressions to give this standalone enrollment number some more context. So I'll add the word students to that label. I'll edit the visible range so that when you zoom in, the number of students appears, and when you zoom out, they disappear. Lastly, I'll rotate the map to share directions to the schools from the I-5 highway. Now it's time to go out and encourage census participation. These new updates are all about exploring and understanding your data so quickly that you have the time to experiment, be creative, and ask deeper questions. Mapping in ArcGIS Online just keeps getting better. Thank you.